Okay. Um, so my name is Nikhil. Uh, I'm a 281 IA. And this video is focused on giving you sort of an introduction of how to set up your project for ECS 281. You know, you're given a spec and um, you have to go about creating a uh, coding project from scratch, right? That's, that's new to a lot of you. Um, so this video is supposed to give you a gentle, a gentle introduction into that task. Now, a couple disclaimers. This video is going to be focused on um, Mac users, specifically Mac OS Big Sur and uh, the Xcode IDE. If you're on Windows or something, uh, Dr. P is going to be making a video for Visual Studio. How do you get your project set up uh, if, you're, uh, if you're using Visual Studio? So check out his uh, video. Um, Oliver is also making a video on make files. And Dr. P will also be making a video on Project Zero. So a couple of videos to check out. Uh, but anyway, let's get started with this. Uh, and also, if you're not on Mac OS Big Sur, I will talk about what's different. It's a very slight change, um, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but if you can upgrade your software, please do. Mac OS Big Sur is pretty stable now. So OK, let's create this Xcode project, firing up Xcode. Uh, create new Xcode project. Command line tool. ECS two eighty one. Project zero. Winter twenty twenty one. Okay. Now create this project. Okay. So here is our project. Right. So we've created this project. Now we need to go find uh, the files that are given to us such that we can set up this project. So in 281, uh, there's three really types of files. There's the few files we give you. So these are like text files typically. Um, for project zero, you get the CPP file, but typically you won't get um, uh, CPP files most of the time. There are exceptions here and there. Um, you need your make file and your Xcode redirect. Um, and these text files are used for testing your code, by the way. Anyway, so let's go do that. How do we go find those files, right? So let's go to Canvas. Uh, Xcode redirect is right here. Um, you go to resources, Xcode files, Xcode redirect, and then take this link. And go to GitLab um, and download the file. Okay. Um, now, how do I get this stuff for project zero? You go to project zero. Um, and just download all of this. So you've got the identifier, you've got some starter files, you've got the spec, which I recommend you read. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay, so now we've got all our necessary files, mostly. Um, let's open up this tar file. Notice how I downloaded the Mac starter file, right? This is the starter file, the starter tar file for Mac users. If you're on Windows, please download this file. Um, Dr. P will be going to that in his Windows Visual Studio uh, video, so please look at that if you're on that system. Okay, I'm gonna open up this file, this uh, tar, um, and I've got the project zeros.cpp, some sample files, and the makefile.txt. So notice how I have to get it from GitLab. <laughs> A lot of the files, uh, things like Xcode redirect to make files, um, you'll probably have to get on GitLab. And I think we're moving more towards getting files on GitLab. Okay. Um, opening up this make file, downloading it. Uh, so now we have a make file, I, I think. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Now notice how it's a TXT file. Typically, you'll want to try to rename this to a regular make file, and when you 
put it into your Xcode project, you'll probably have to rename it again. Okay, so now we've got all our files. Um, now we have to add it to our project, right? <laughs> I'm sure you've all done this before in some way, shape, or form. Now here is what is different about macOS Big Sur. Typically, uh, we would advise you if you're in previous, um, if you're running a previous version of macOS, to either start a new file or hit Add to Files, and then you'll get a drop down typically, um, and you can go pick the file. There's a slight change in macOS Big Sur. Um, adding files uh, from this dialog box doesn't really work very well. Uh, I've tried to make it work. It's a little bit weird. So I would either I would recommend you to either hit new file or honestly just just drag it in. <laughs> yeah, that's that's um, it's totally an option. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So uh, you want to hit copy items if needed, and you don't want to add it to targets. You only want to add CPP files to targets. Otherwise, it won't compile. Uh, so hit finish. It takes a minute to load and here it is. So our make file is here. Notice how it's a .txt file. It needs to be a make file. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. It's a make file. So let's get uh, the Xcode redirect. I'm going to drag that in. Okay. Um, and project zero.cpp in the sample files. Okay, now I'm gonna remove this main.cpp because we don't need it, it just came by default. And I wanna add project zero.cpp to targets because it's a CPP file that I wanna use, right? Okay, um, now there's one last thing we need to do. You might have noticed there's project zero identifier.txt. So uh, when you upload code to the autograder, you'd want to put this um, this uh, this identifier at the top of every file, every .h file, every CPP file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So at the top, you'll see to do add project identifier. So go ahead and add it, right? You don't need to do this for your .txt files, but for your CPP and H files, uh, you will need to do it. Um, as well as your make file in the identifier section, we'll get into that later, um, but you also need to put it there. Okay, so let's go into Xcode redirect. This will help you handle some of the I.O. in Xcode um, and it'll make sure you'll, you have a smooth development experience. We'll be reading in a lot of text files during this class and it's important that it works well, right? Um, so that's why we use this uh, Xcode redirect file. So how do we actually integrate that into our CPP? So what you need to do for every CPP file, hashtag include uh, Xcode redirect, and in your um, main file, you need to say um, Xcode redirect argc argv. Okay. Now, one other thing. Um, when you create an Xcode project and you get main.cpp, what I have here is slightly different than what you will have by default. By default, you'll have something that says const char argv. If you try to do this, you'll see we get an error with Xcode redirect. So please take out const and uh, the errors will go away. <laughs> Useful tip. Um, also, please include iOS based sync with studio false. This will speed up some of your IO. Uh, and that's important because in 281, when we grade your projects, we don't just check to make sure that it produces the right output, right? We also check that, you know, um, 
it isn't taking too much time to run. It isn't taking too much memory to run. Those are also important factors, time and memory complexity. So any little speed up you can get is important. Um, okay, so we've covered a good deal. Now we're gonna go into make files. This is the main part. So there's a couple things when you download a make file you need to change. First of all, the identifier. We've already done that, that's fine. Now, um, your unique name. And keep in mind, the identifier is different for everything you submit, for every lab, for every project. But we will give you that ahead of time and we will make clear, here's the identifier, copy it, paste it, use it. Uh, executable, this will be usually mentioned in the project spec. Uh, fortunately enough, I know uh, the project spec ahead of time. So I'm gonna just put project zero. Uh, usually you don't have to worry about uh, the project file as long as you name the executable file the right thing. Um, and that's about it in changing the make file. There are some more customizations you can do and other things you can include, but um, for getting started, that's all you really need. Now, let's actually run this make file. Um, give me a second. Okay, here we are. So now I am in my project. Uh, if you hit make, it'll create the executable. Make clean will remove the executable. So I'm gonna hit make again. Now, if I wanna run the code, um, I'll do dot slash project zero. Um, let's just run it. You will see that we got an error, no mode specified. That's because I haven't done project zero yet. If you wanna learn more about how to do project zero, check out Dr. P's video, right? Um, there's a couple other useful make commands that I'll mention. Uh, aren't ultra important, but it's important to, that I at least mention it, right? There's make ungraded. And what this does, it creates an ungraded submit for you. So you can submit to the auto grader. It will not count against your grade. It will not count against your daily limit. It's basically such that you can submit to the auto grader and hey, you know, you go to office hours and you're like, you need some help with your code. We can pull it up really quick and look at it right there. And also if you're uh, asking questions on Piazza, um, making grades is really useful for that. Another useful um, make command is make debug. This will create a, ver oh, sorry, make, uh, make debug. This will create a version of the executable, which will, um, that is easy for programs like perf, um, Balgrind, and malloc to analyze uh, in terms of time and memory complexity. Typically what you'll do is you'll um, SSH into the, into the Kane server, and then from there, Valgrind and Perf are already installed, and you can test your code looking for memory leaks, looking for places where you can make it faster using Perf and Valgrind and other tools like that. Okay, I am going to stop this video real quick and actually just do Project Zero, um, and then we're gonna submit it to the auto grader. So I'll be right back. Okay. So I've done project zero and now I'm going to submit to the auto grader. In order to submit to the auto grader, what I want to do is I want to say uh, make full submit. And now this tar file will be used to grade your submission. Um, okay. So I hit choose file in the auto grader and then I go find the uh, the tar file that I need. And I check the timestamp today at 948. It's 948, must be the right file, <laughs> hopefully. Um, I hit full submit tar and I upload. Okay, now we just have to wait for this to process and uh, we should know how we did. Keep in mind, I did project zero ahead of time. And nine out of nine, we're good to go. Now, if you want a more in-depth tutorial into Project Zero, please check out Dr. P's video. More in-depth tutorial into Makefile, check out Oliver's video. 
Uh, if you want to know how to do set up projects for uh, Windows in Visual Studio, check out Dr. P's video. We'll link everything in the description. Uh, but that's your basic rundown. Good luck in 281. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys in office hours and lab. Um, and yeah, have a, have a good day.